Okay, we are. Yes, we are back here again. Had some difficulty here. I'd like to be able to move around to the other side over here, but then the sun shines right in my face and makes it real tricky. Okay, I have another request video here. And uh, where did it go? Damn it. Okay, hang on a second here. Oh, here it is. I have a lady who has requested a video on self-sabotage, all right, which I happen to be an expert on, well, figuratively speaking. One of the things that I have noticed with people who self-sabotage is in having a chance to kind of work with them on occasion, I find and I have found that for the biggest majority of them, in looking for the reason that they do self-sabotage, I've already found that in most cases, whenever you're dealing with almost anybody in every particular type of difficulty that they're having, is you have to, first of all, find a point of origin. And for me, the point of origin, and this will kind of um, give you an example, uh, one has to be degraded or put in a situation where their self-worth, their self-image, their self-esteem has been totally, I'm going to put it this way, smashed, brutalized, manipulated, bent, abused, by someone else, all right? Until that person begins to feel as though that they themselves are a problem. And to give you an example case in point of this, um, my father was the kind of guy, actually now as I look back in retrospect, I see him as the best teacher I ever had. However, he was uh, an alcoholic, he was physically abusive, verbally abusive, and especially emotionally abusive. And what happened was that as a youngster, and my father with his constant drinking, actually my father, mother and my father were both um, heavy drinkers, my father had this interesting habit that he would do, and I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, he would kind of, and this would have been when I'd been eight or nine or ten years old, in that timeline. And he would kind of walk up behind me, and he kind of give me a, a like a smack on the back of the head. All right, that's why my head is flat at the back, and it's, it's kind of square. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and when he hit me and I would fall down, usually just about every time, um, he would say, no, that's for nothing stupid. Now do something. Well, obviously, with that kind of wonderful programming, by the time I was 20, I actually thought I was stupid. And I never finished high school um, because I thought I was stupid. So obviously, uh, if you have that kind of mentality programmed into you, um, your whole life is going to be about self-sabotage, and that's exactly what I did. Um, every time that something would start to go well or good for me, um, and let, let me tell you, I've had a lot of really good opportunities in my life uh, that came to me, and it's always seemed that as the opportunities came and things started going good, there was this part inside of me that would you know, answer to the programming <coughs> because things were going good and because, <coughs> because I didn't think as though that I deserved them, excuse me, what would happen was, is the programming would uh, indicate that I needed to do something to put myself back in my, my appropriate, my appropriate zone of mentality and I would do something stupid to sabotage the situation and this became the pattern. 
And what happened was, is I also started to realize, and this especially became obvious when I began my spiritual awakening, as many of you know, is your spiritual awakening initially, nowadays what happens is Kundalini and Heart Center awakening begins at the same time. When I started my spiritual awakening, I had a third eye awakening. I didn't have Heart Center awakening. I had a third eye awakening. I had an experience with a white light. And I had experience with two parts of self separating uh, in a visionary experience. And the idea of things going well became even more prominent. I started getting more attracting different kind of people to me than what I had been accustomed to. And I would sabotage that by doing something stupid to break up a friendship. Or I would have a relationship that would be pending. And I would do something stupid to break up that. Uh, and it just seemed as though that I had to have this comfort zone where life was relatively unhappy. Yeah, that would be the way I'd put it. Relatively unhappy, but not unhappy enough that I would be miserable. Let me put it that way. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So the self-sabotage thing became a real issue when the spiritual endeavors or the spiritual creativity or the potential started to really come out. And I started noticing that, and I noticed it when I started doing the channeled uh, aspect, doing channeled readings for people. I would be very successful for a period of time and I actually started getting paid for them. And I was making money and I was doing quite well with it. And all of a sudden, I reached the, the limit of where I could go without the self-sabotage kicking in again. So I did exactly that. And this became the pattern over the period of years. And I'm sure this happened to a lot of people. And what it boiled down to is I had to t take time out and I had to go back and I had to take a look at it and say to myself, okay, first of all, I think the key for me was and the key for everybody else is, is you, you have to actually recognize that you're actually sabotaging yourself, all right? A lot of people can go through their whole life, they don't even know where that they're doing it. It's just a habit pattern to them, and they never become aware. But once you become aware, the first thing that you need to do is you need to find out where this came from, or the point of origin. And for me, the whole thing started, and I realized it with the, the programming that my father put into me, and I realized I had a self-image, a self-worth, and also a few other problems in regards to that because I actually thought I was stupid. So <clears throat> to be correcting the program, what I did was at the age of, uh, I think I was, I don't know, 38, 39, 40, somewhere in that, I can't remember the detail. but. I was talking to a friend and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I've got this pattern that every time things start going good, uh, I, I seem to sabotage and I do something to screw it up. And then I have to go back and, and apologize to people. And I hate apologizing. I don't mind apologizing if apologize, an apology is necessary. And I know I screwed up, but I hate having to do it when it was totally unnecessary on my part to do the dumb or stupid thing that I did to sabotage it. And then have to go back and apologize afterward. So she said to me, she said, well, you know, tell me a little bit what your childhood was like. So I gave it to her and she said, well, obviously you don't think you're too bright. And I said, no, I don't. I said, I don't think I'm smart at all. I said, I didn't do very well in school uh, at all. I said, I didn't finish high school. And she said, look, look we're going to do something here. She said, what I'm going to ask you to do is she said, go and get yourself tested go to one of the colleges or the university whatever get yourself tested see where the hell you're at so i did to make a long story short when i went to the college to get tested and the lady said to me she said well with the exception of math which you need to go into and you know upgrade a little bit she said we're going to recommend you go directly into university so i looked at her and said are you kidding me no she was very serious but at that moment at that moment when the woman said that to me, <clears throat> I realized something and it, it hit home that I was not stupid and that I was actually very intelligent 
uh, and that I was also very creative and I realized I had a problem. So I started spending time in my meditations and going back and looking at this is my method only for how I did it. Okay, and if other of you out there having self-sabotage problems, you might want to take a similar pathway. So what I did was this, all right? I went back and I played back through my mind and my memory as many times that I could think of when my father did the clip thing and knocked me on the floor and made the comment, no, that's for nothing stupid, now do something. Now I'm sure others of you will come up with stuff that's even worse than what that mine is. And I realized I had the self-image problem, the self-worth, and the self-confidence problem came out of that particular programming. So I said to myself, there's got to be a way to change this. There's got to be a way to work with this. And the first thing that I, that I come up with was this. And this was, so I started, what I would do is I would, I would close my eyes and I would, first of all, take a look at the scenario with my father. And then I would take a look at, okay, what was the last time that I sabotaged myself? What did I do? All right. And I go back and I play it back in my memory and I take a look at it and I remember the sequence of events leading up to when I would do something stupid to sabotage myself. All right. And I found out, and I found out there were, shall we say, indications that I was going to self-sabotage prior to it actually happening. And what I noticed was, is I would become uneasy, but I didn't know why. And I would feel very restless. And I would be unable to relax or sit still and be quiet. I would find I would get um, ticky or agitated. Uh, basic tasks would become, you know, a little frustrating or, or they weren't going well. And these were all indications that I was about to do something stupid that was going to self-sabotage. So the idea here is that you have to go back and you have to identify your pattern. My pattern is not your pattern. I can only identify my pattern and you can use my pattern, which is recognizable, to recognize your own pattern when you do this. And I recognize that I did have these indications on a forthcoming self-sabotage. So what I said to myself, I said, okay, now I'm going to watch for this stuff. I'm going to pay attention. And it didn't happen overnight. It took a little time. It takes a little focus. It takes a little discipline. It takes some effort here. You know, don't put nothing into it. You're not going to gain anything. All right. So many people these days want to go on YouTube or the Internet and they want to find a magic meditation or a magic formula or a magic book or somebody who is going to wave their magic energy hand all over them and everything is going to be wonderful and everything is going to be fixed. Unfortunately, you're living in the land of illusion if you feel that way. There's no magic pill or a magic bullet. It's all about you have to do it yourself. But there are people like me out there who will give you the tools and put them in as simplest form as possible. So the other thing that I did was this. Having recognized the indication, I decided to do something which I thought at the time was very, very weird. I'm good, that's the first word I'm going to use, weird. But then I thought about it being, hmm, this is pretty racy. All right. So I said to myself, okay. So if my father did this and he impressed me with the idea and the thought that I was stupid, therefore I created out of that context a self-image, a self-worth and self-confidence that was limited, warped or subdued or sublimated, whatever term you want to use, within myself. So. If that's the case, and my father programmed me, and then I programmed to add to it, then who's the hell to say that I can't go back and reprogram it and change it around? Now, keep in mind, this was like 35 years ago I did this. Nowadays, this is quite common to do this. But in those days, I think that I was way ahead of a lot of people. So what I did was this. 
I went back, and in my meditations, this is what I would do. I would go to the heart center chakra, and I would focus on creating a visual pattern of seeing the situation as it appeared at the time with my father, and then I would go to each situation that I could remember, and I would change it. I would visually see it going in a different way. I would see it going in a different way as if he changed his mind, for example, and he decided not to smack my head, and I would get up and walk away with a smile on my face. All right? Or I would simply see it as instead of him hitting me on the back of the head, we went fishing instead. All right? Unfortunately, my father never took me fishing. All right? But I would see it that way. And people will say, well, that's fantasy, that's illusion. You're, you're creating something that didn't happen and didn't exist. But here's the thing that I've discovered, all right, about this, is that part of yourself that's inside, all right, I'm going to call it the inner child, and at that time it was the inner child, doesn't know the difference between what is real and manifested in 3D and what you think or create with. And the beauty of the system was when I started doing this, my heart center had already been active. And the one thing that we all know about the heart center chakra is that it is a creative source center. Many people on the planet are still thinking of it as, as the source of unconditional love. If it is the source of unconditional love, all of our problems on this planet should have been gone a long time ago. So the spiritual community is living in an illusionary bubble all right, of calling it unconditional love, and love is going to solve all of our problems. It's not. Source creative energy, which is not love, which is far beyond love, because love from a 3D perspective is limited, all right? When you say you love someone, you're saying that from a limited, limited perspective. When you say you love someone unconditionally, you have no idea what you're talking about because you don't know what unconditional love is, all right? You do know, and you can sense and feel source creative energy. It's neutral, all right? Source energy is neutral. You're the divine aspect. You're the creator. You create it. And we do this from the time we're born into the world. But the problem lies here is that everybody else gets to put in the input, and we don't. So now we're being asked as creator to do the input. So anything that's been done to us is fixable. We can go back and we can repair it in that particular way. So what I did was exactly that. I went back and I saw myself with my father every time that a situation would come up, I would go back and I'd play it back. So finally what happened is I really got I really got racy and I stopped eliminating the remember when he did this or remember when he did that. And I went back and I reprogrammed my whole childhood in a different way and I changed everything around, all right? Like a big fantasy, like a big movie, like a big fantasy illusion, as it were. I created a whole childhood that was actually fun and interesting. And the purpose behind it was to actually change my consciousness, which happened. And what happened was, is over an extended period of time, as I said, the inner child can't tell the difference between what is real and what is not. What you imagine is all the same to the inner child. So what I realized was that I could change, that I could be confident, that I could have a good self-image, that I could have self-confidence, all right? And this is exactly what happened over an extended period of time. I will tell you, and I'll tell you very honestly, everyone, there was a time in my life that doing something like this, sitting on a YouTube people, sitting on a YouTube and actually talking to people and knowing that they're going to listen to what I'm going to say and that they're going to possibly make positive or negative comments, all right, was something that would be beyond my comprehension that would have been impossible, all right? What I've learned today is nothing is impossible unless I believe it to be so, in that perspective. And the idea here of self-sabotage can also be corrected. It's the same thing with people who, you know, almost do, um, they wound themselves or they do something to them. Self-sabotage means that you can actually physically injure yourself, all right? Physically injuring yourself is another form of self-sabotage that comes from the idea of your self-worth, your self-esteem, and it's because of the environment or the situation that you were downloaded with. And this is exactly what happened to me. 
So the idea here now is if you can go back and you can see the whole of your childhood and see it now as you would like it to have gone, as opposed to the way that it did go. But here's the key, all right? And I keep mentioning this all the time. Everybody on this planet, it seems like, in the spiritual community is talking about the event. The event is coming, or this event is important, or this event is coming. We have uh, astrology signs that uh, new energy is coming in, and the event is going to take place, and we got a special event coming up at the moon. we got a special event coming up at that, and this, that, and the other thing. Well, let me clarify again. The event that everybody has been waiting for has happened over 20 years ago, and that was the awakening of the heart center chakra. It's now time for people to start using it, because those of you who have gone through the changes, the personality changes, the environmental changes, and all of the caca poo poo that you had to go through are now in a situation where a lot of that shit has been filtered out of you. Now you can contribute and participate with your forward pathway, if I can put it that way, by entering into a liaison, if I can put it that way, with your heart center, which has been gifted to you, which is the most important event that's happened in your life, and it's the most important event that's happened on this planet in 2,000 years. All right. So it's very important that you do this and get into it with the self-sabotage thing. You would be surprised how quickly you can change. But here's the key, all right, just to kind of refresh for a moment. You have to go back and you have to take a look at your self-sabotage pattern. You have to recognize the symptoms all right, for the indications of when you're going to self-sabotage. If you take a look, you'll see them. Once you see them, then you have to find the point of origin. You have to find out what it was in your life that created this condition, that created the, the lack of self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, that you feel you're not worthy, and you start to self-sabotage. And when you find the person or the situation, whatever, then you go back and you change that with the heart center chakra by combining the imaginative faculty, heart center together, and focusing in the heart center. And if you need additional information, I can teach you how to do that, all right? And I can also do something else. I have learned how to do transference, all right? Some of you will be able to pick it up as you're watching this video. And if you're evolved enough, you'll also know that I can transfer with some of you right here on the video. With others who are not quite there yet, you may need to get a hold of me, and I can show you how to do this, and you can do that through our website, all right? So I'm going to stop the video here. I actually enjoyed doing this one and kind of putting it. I always will um, do this when putting a video out. Uh, again, as always, you're not going to get any bells and whistles. Uh, I am going to be more mobile from this point on and getting around so that, uh, like I said, I got bored sitting in the green room myself, so everybody else must have too. And I'm always going to keep it as simple as possible. Keep in mind, there are variables and variations in everything that I say. Everything that I say is not written in stone or divine gospel. All right. So it's that kind of a situation. So if you need help, don't be shy about asking. It's very important to do that. All right. Okay. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.